So we've also got hmm. the background, uh, the usual list of suspects, uh, Chris Blair, Jay Joshi, and I think Matthew Ray's uh, calling in as well from Australia. Um, they will be able to answer any questions you care to write uh, on the, uh, again, in the Ghost Meeting dashboard uh, as we go through this. And uh, if we get a chance at the end, I'll go and have a look at those as well. Uh, but I'm sure they'll be able to answer most of your questions as we go. All right, so what we're going to be actually constructing is something that's going to look a bit like this. We're going to start off with a, an existing quarry site, a rough surface of one of those, and we're going to build a reservoir, which we can uh, put an island in the middle of and do all sorts of in interesting stuff. So that's the plan. And we're going to go and run and do the demo. So um, let me just switch to that. Simple 3D. And here is our beginning um, surface. So I don't know if uh, anybody here is tuning in is from Auckland, but this is the old um, uh, Mount Wellington Quarry. Let me show you the surface if you like. Let's show you what we're going to do. I've just got a pretty rough surface here, but it's, it's enough for us to play with. There's Mount Wellington in the background there, and the old quarry in front, and there's a big depression in the middle of it that I want to convert into a, uh, a bit of a more um, sculpted and um, user-friendly reservoir. So let's go and have a play with that. So zooming in on the area of interest, actually we've just got a aerial photograph in the background there that you can see. If I click on the edge of that, I'll fade it out a bit to make it easier to see what we're working with. And then zoom in on our area of interest. So this is the depression in the middle here. It's quite a big one. Uh, what have we got? Elevation of 18 metres in the middle, and we've got about on the edge here, about a 30 metre contour up here. Yep, so I might work with that 30 metre contour uh, as the edge of our lake. So the first thing I want to do, um, these, these, these of course are the grading tools. Um, for those who have done uh, some training with us, um, you will have had a bit of a play with the training, the grading tools. We're going to take a step further into some more of the, the other things you can do, the more advanced features of using the grading tools and how those go together. And that's really the purpose of this uh, little demonstration. So um, let me zoom in at that point and I'm just going to start drawing polyline. Um, straight section there use in a moment and then I'm going to actually start doing arcs to make it a nice smooth sort of uh, rounded shape to work with and roughly following around that contour because obviously your lake is going to be somewhere near the, the contour and once it gets filled up around there just linking arcs here Let's use that as the boundary for our, our pond. Let's also um, give that an elevation. So I start off with a 30 metre contour. I want to put it down below the ground a little bit uh, to begin with. I think would be best. So let's select it. Bring up its AutoCAD properties. I'm just going to give it an elevation. It was a 30 metre contour, so I'm going to give it an elevation of 29. That's a metre below the ground for most of that. A little bit more maybe. So that's just the polyline, we want to convert it to a, um, to a feature line so we can grade off it. So up in the ribbon here, feature lines, create feature lines from objects, that's my object, enter. Give it a name, well actually we'll make a new site for the same, create a new site, and call it uh, pond. Okay. 
the name is going to be Pondage. And we're going to start with a, just going to be green line for that particular style, which is fine. I want to erase the existing entity so I don't have two objects over the top of each other. Don't need to weed, weed points, we've already got the elevation set. So I can go OK, and it comes that green line. OK, from the um, from the uh, feature line we can start grading. So I'm going to start my grading tools, grading creation tools. Click on the, I always check the first icons when I come into this toolbar, so click on the first one. The site name is going to be my pond. The grading group, there is currently no grading group, so I need to click on the icon to make a new one. And I'll call it um, on base. On base would be good. There we go. I'm going to actually tick on automatic service creation for this one, and I'm going to put it on a style of contours background 5 meters should be okay for this one, I think. Oh, I think the audio might have dropped out there for a minute, but hopefully you haven't missed too much. Uh, just change, giving the uh, grading group a uh, an automatic surface creation. And actually, let's do contours back ground at 2 metres for that surface. I'm going to leave the tessellation spacing and angle as they are, and we'll see how they go. Um, again, those control where you've got arcs, how, how finely those arcs are tri triangulated up. And a volume based surface because measure volumes against the existing ground and go OK. That's all right, go OK again and OK and pretty much set there. Surface is existing ground, so we're good. Change the criteria set to A and Z if it isn't already. Let's change the changes these drop downs, we're all good. So the first thing I want to do is make a grading from this line out uh, on the outside of this line towards the surface to give a nice smooth edge to, well, reasonably smooth, but uh, also not too steep edge to my pond. So I'm going to select the grading criteria here with a, uh, actually down the bottom of the list, surface at a particular slope. Until it's find the surface of the slope, click the icon here to start or create grading. Click on my feature line, click on the outside, apply the entire length, yes. And I'm going to give it a slope for cut and fill, if it needs fill, um, of 1 and 6. I'm just going to type in 6 and 6. Alright, that's looking not too bad. Cool. So we've done that. So it's gone from my feature line, which is slightly below the ground, and graded up until it hits the, hits the ground at a fairly uh, not too steep angle. So from the... Working on the inside of the feature line now, um, we want to start dropping down into this hole. What I'd like to do, this is going to be a, a uh, it's not a pond, it's actually more of a lake really, uh, a bit of a lake, so I'll put a beach edge on here first, so I'm going to go and have a relative elevation change, specifying a grade. Again, just click on that button if you need to, to start grading. I'm going to pick my green feature line, come on the inside, and apply the entire length, yes. Relative elevation, let's make a 0.5 of a metre, or sorry, minus 0.5, so it goes downwards. And a grade of, let's have the beach at, say, 3% or 5%. Let's go for 5%. A little 5% slope for the beach edge. So, once we've got the beach established in there, let me just hit escape, pick my surface, look in the object viewer and make sure it's looking all right. So there we go, we've got a little flat piece of beach, uh, which drops half a metre, and we're grading out in one and six all the way back to the, uh, the edge of the surface where we need to. So we can start working out, uh, working downwards into the depression uh, in the middle here and construct our actual lake bed now. So let's go and do that. Um, we're going to uh, do something slightly different here. 
I'm going to change it so that um, we don't apply the grading all the way around the feature line now, which is, which is one of the things that people often ask about. So again, I'm going to do a relative elevation change, and I think we'll find that down the bottom here we're at about 18, 19 metres. And up here on the edge of the beach, I'm at uh, surface go. There we go, at about 28.5. So we'll drop down about 10 metres or so is what we want to do to the bottom of the, the bottom of the lake. So let's do a grade, uh, a relative ele elevation, uh, but it's going to be. I'm going to use a slope of uh, one and two to get down to the bottom of that quite steep, but it's quite a steep hole actually. So uh, that we've got to fill up the quarry as well. So let's go and do that. Hit the create grading button again, pick the feature line on the inside. This time apply to your tile length, go no. When you do that you get a little green arrow that you can slide around the place. And I'm going to say, OK, well, to start my grading at, uh, say, that point. When you click, it doesn't immediately pick that point. It asks, do you want to confirm that as the station that you want? So you hit Enter. And then I'm going to move my arrow around. I'm going to bring it around to the other side. I'm to, you can see the, the direction that the arrow is pointing is the side of those lines that the grading is going to be formed. So I want, to, yeah, about there somewhere. Should be OK. And relative elevation change from minus 10 metres, we decided, or I decided. And slope of 1 and 2 will be fine. Okay, so the reason for doing this, making this little gap, is that I wanted to um, put a ramp in here. So if the um, water level drops significantly, um, you can still get access to the water down a ramp, but it's sort of a 1 in 6 slope is what I'm going to put in there. Um, but we need to sort of blend it into this previous grading that we've done. So what we actually do, keep the um, grading type the same, it has to be the same grading type that you use using for, for both the area around the outside plus this, this ramp, and then we can blend them together, but only if they're the same. So. I'm going to use the same uh, command again, and you can see it's still active with the pick lock, so I can just continue. Click the feature line I want to run off. I'm going to make a new grading between, say, here, hit enter, and we'll bounce it up about there, hit enter. Relative elevation, again, is the same, minus 10, but a slope of 1 and 6, and type 6, and enter. And we get that. So let's so have a look at what this looks like in the 3D viewer. I'm going to pick it, right click object viewer, we'll pick the surface I should say, and this is what we've got. So there's my ramp running down into the bottom of the pond, which allows me to um, access the bottom of the pond if the water's completely gone, give a digger down there, whatever it happens to be. So we want to blend in now the um, ramp here with the uh, steeper graded sides of the pond, of the pond itself, or the lake itself. So uh, this is where a little tool comes in that a lot of people don't know how to use or, or haven't uh, used it themselves. And it is the drop down here for create a transition. Now, it took me a while to work out this the first time I tried to use it. Create a transition can be used, but what it needs is this little gap between the two gradings that you want to transition between. That's what it's looking for. So you make your gradings first. You then, according to the command line there, it says select the feature. So select the feature line we're going to run off. And then it says select the location between two gradings um, in which to make this transition. So you simply just click in one of these gaps and it'll fill that in. And I'm going to do the same thing on this other side. Select the feature line again and click in the transition area. Hit escape and the uh, software will have filled that in for us. Have a look in the object viewer. So what it's doing is just simply a linear transition between one grade and the other. We'll go around corners and things if you want it to. But now I've got my ramp grading back to my 
uh, one six ramp grading that back to my one and two side of the pond. Okay, so that's uh, all pretty straightforward, and it's similar to the function that I showed with the uh, dam last time. In fact, it's the same as the function I showed last time, but there's an, another new thing we can have a look at. Uh, something I didn't show last time. It's not really new, uh, but it's uh, something people might not have seen. So, I'll just do a save at that point. New note, just in case. And uh, what I want to do is construct an island in the middle of here. So, uh, I'm just going to sketch in the bottom edge of where that island I want it to go, which will be at the level of the bottom of the pond. So let's check what the level of the bottom of the pond looks like. The pond base looks to be 18.6 at that point, so it must be 18.5 right at the edge. Yeah, 18.5. So I'm going to make, again, a just a simple polyline so I can make a nice curvy thing. Um, let's try up about here somewhere. Make an arc. Specify the direction at the start of that arc, which will be, let's go for that direction. And I'm going to arc it around, something like that, get it around the back, arc it around here, make it a sharper arc, bring it into, say, something like, I can make it quite fat there actually, let's try that, and curve it back, and seal the close, that's quite reasonable. Let's make an island that shape. And what did I say? 18.5 for the height now, I think. Yeah. So I'm going to pick my polyline, AutoCAD properties. In fact, that's the way we did it last time. Let's do it a different way now. I'm going to convert it into a feature line first, just for, as a reminder for people uh, what you can do with feature lines. Create feature lines from objects. Yep. It's going to be a site called Pond. We want it the same site as what we had before to make this work. The name is going to be uh, Island Base. Style is grading. Race existing entities. Let's assign the elevation as we go. Actually, no, let's not do that. We'll do it after the fact. And go OK. So it's now there. I can pick that feature line up in the ribbon, click on Edit Elevations, and then get the Elevation Editor. And that allows you to change vertex by vertex the elevation of that thing. But in fact, I'm just going to control the whole lot and make them all 18.5. If you recall, you can actually change the grade from one point to another. Um, so for instance, I could say when I click on one of these lines, it'll highlight in the background. That's the, that vertex there with a little triangle around it. The next one is this vertex here. If I want to change the elevation of the second vertex based on the first one in a grade, I can just change it in this line, change the grade of hits here and say that's got to be 2%. And it will change the grades in here, but also change the elevation of that point there, the next one on. So you can control these things by grade all the way around if you wanted to. In some circumstances that would be useful. For me, I just want more the same height, so it's going to be 18.5. So I'm happy with that. If I hover over one of those grips, I can see down in the bottom left-hand corner it's 18.5 and the Z elevation, so we're all good to go. I want to start grading off this now, but uh, we want to somehow fill between the base of our previous grading that we've done and this feature line. And we can do that if they're in the same grading group and the same site. So not, they're not actually in the same grading group yet. Uh, but they are in the same site, and that's all we need. So we can actually apply, and we've used this before if you've done the training with us, create infill, and it will actually grab a closed region between two poly, uh, feature lines if you want, which is actually really useful. So if I click in there, it puts a little diamond in that area, and we can check with the um, object viewer. It's actually filled that in all the way around uh, between the two feature lines we had. So we can actually do some quite complex things by doing separate feature lines. So this is a new drawn feature line. 
first feature line we drew was for the outside of the pond, but they can be combined into the same grading. So that's actually quite a neat feature. So let's go and continue the grading of this pond. So, um, or rather the island. So I'm going to, let's have a rel same uh, command as what we used before, relative elevation at a slope. Start to create grading. Click on my feature line, it's going to be the inside, apply to the entire length, yes. Now let's see if, if we do a relative elevation of 10 metres and a slope of 1 and 2. Yeah, it's not too bad. It's not getting a very big island in here, I'd like to have my island a bit bigger. So let's have a play with this. Let's go and change the command to edit grading. I'm going to pick in that last grading that we just did and I can rerun the command. So let's make a relative elevation of say, uh, what have we got? Let's make it 5, 5 metres instead of 10. Same slope. Okay, now we're getting a bit better island. Problem is, this won't poke up if it's only 5 metres high. It won't poke up through the surface of the lake once we fill this with water. So what I'm actually going to do is just pick the feature line that is the base of the dam, but sorry, base of the island, and I'm just going to start the move command on it and lift the whole base of that up by five meters. So start the move command, type D for displacement. Actually, we don't have to type D for displacement these days, do we? In 2013, we can pick that uh, feature line, start the move command, and you can see the displacement has a little grey box around it now on the command line. I can actually just click on that. I don't have to type anything. And it's asking for displacement now. And so I do have to type 0, 0, 0 and move it up 5 metres in the z-axis. OK. Let's have a look at what that's done to our surface. So you can see that that infill that we put in there previously now is sloping up to our 5 metre our contour that's halfway half the depth of the lake, and then up to our island, which should be in the same plane, looks like it is, as the edge of the lake, the outside edge. We will put a lake in here in a minute. But uh, that's a good start. Uh, what I'd like to do now is finish off the island. So let's go, so we've got a 1 and 2 slope there. Let's do another relative elevation change uh, with a slope. Start the command, pick on the feature line, apply the entire length, yes. Let's have a relative elevation change of 0.5 of a metre. And a slope of this 1 and 2, let's go uh, 1 and 4. Actually we can make that a little bigger. So let's go and, I'll oh, we'll fix it in a minute. Uh, let's go and do another one of the same. Pick that feature line, apply the entire length, yes, relative elevation of 0.5 and a slope of 1 and 6. And let's do an infill in the middle here, just a good flat top, great infill in that region. Good. Now I'd like to change one of these uh, gradings, so I'm going to click on the edit button, click on that first grading and give that relative elevation change of one meter instead to make it somewhat wider. Same slope, one and four, and you can see everything else adjusts as it needs to on that. So let's have a look and see what our island looks like now. Object viewer, that's not too bad. I don't know whether that one's yin or yang, but it's quite a nice looking island. Okay, uh, that should about do us for the outside of that. So you can see relatively quickly you can build up some quite complex shapes, uh, some curvy linear type shapes as well. Um, it doesn't have to be all square edges, um, which is nice. Okay, so we can do some combinations and bits and pieces in here with some of the new features in 2013. So I'm going to remove my creation tools here, my grading creation tools, and just do another little save. 
let's have a look at some other features. So um, what I'd like to do is do a bit of a, a, a analysis of the um, amount of cut fill going on in here. What I should probably do is pick my surface, pick my existing ground surface, have a look in the object viewer and make sure that my levels are correct. So, okay, there's an island being built up in the middle there, in the middle of the big depression. I'll just let your screens catch up for a second there. Yeah, you should be able to see that now. And if I look at the underside of the surface, it's cutting down. Uh, it's built the edge of the pond. Pardon me, the pond. So that's uh, something like what we're wanting to do. Now cut full balance would be a good thing to do. So let me close that viewer. Um, same as, well, there's two ways we can do it now. Um, let me show you the way that you probably would have been shown in training, which is on the grading tools and grading creation tools. Bring back the toolbar. The grading group is pond based and surfaces EG, so that's what we're talking about. We have the gradings uh, volume tools, click on that, click on OK, and it brings up this little toolbar. So you can see I've got way too much cut at the moment, um, as the net figure there. We can do an automatic balance, and in fact when you do this, even though we've made this out of two separate feature lines, it will raise and lower both feature lines at the same time. Um, to do this balance. So it raises each uh, by the same, raises or lowers each by the same amount when it does it. Um, which is actually really useful, so you don't have to do each one separately, it will do both at the same time. So I'm going to click on the raise lower button here. I want no material left over. We go recalculate it for us. And it's actually uh, Change the level significantly here, so we've got little bits of fill around the edge of, in some places. Um, so I might want to adjust that, the size of that original feature line, perhaps. Um, but let's have a look at what the surface looks like. Actually, there's an interesting artifact going on there, so we might need to work with that. Um, so for this particular one, the it might be nice to actually lower one of these a little bit, or else just move that uh, feature line in a little bit. Might actually fix it, so we can go and have a play with this. So if we go and uh, just a region there. Someone's having a problem hitting the surface up here, so sometimes just a, a very small change in some of these feature lines, in the order of 10 mils, can often fix some of that stuff. Ah, yes, we've got a cut fill situation thing going on here by a little bit. Just give that another little nudge. Uh, I'm bringing this in now, I just want to bring it in a little bit. And bring some of these in a little bit too. Oh, sorry, yeah, I'll slow that. And then we can go re redo our cut fill balance if we want. Um, and just play around with those. But what I wanted to show you is that the um, 2013 Civil 3D has a new tool. So the, pro the, the constraint around that previously was you couldn't include figures for um, bulking factors, to take a and count bulking factors. I think now, I'll find out in the middle, in a minute, I haven't really tried this, but I think we should be able to do it uh, with the volumes dashboard. So if you pick a surface, you get the volumes dashboard. This is the a new, improved volumes dashboard from 2013. You can pick the uh, third icon in here to make a new volume surface as you, well, make a new volume entry in the table as you would have done previously. But what this actually does 
this creates a volume surface immediately as it does it. So you don't have to do volume surfaces manually anymore. You just come into here and you can make a new one. So let's call this volumes. New volume surface as it makes this dashboard. And I'm going to put it on a style so we can see it. Um, ANZ analysis elevation 2D. And then you can pick your base surface and comparison surface. The base surface is our existing ground. And the comparison is the pond base. And in here you can put cut and fill factors if you want. So well, let's leave it as solid measure at the moment and go OK. And you can see we've got Oh, I've adjusted that thing, haven't I? Uh, I played around with the outside here, so it's got a small amount of cut. Um, because I played with it, otherwise it would have the same figure as what we found in the uh, other tools. But uh, what I'd like to do is do some cut fill factors uh, in this. So um, let me put a cut factor of 1.3 and a fill factor of 0.9. And as I'm adjusting those, these adjusted figures are updating uh, straight away. Um, I'll just put this fill factor back to one and you'll see the fill will adjust as soon as you do it. Point nine. Okay, so now we can see we've got um, in the adjusted figures, a bit too much cut. So we need to um, raise the pond a bit. So let's go and do that. Now, we don't have the automatic raise lower button anymore. I'm just going to send this surface to the back so we can pick other things. Oh, it's gone behind the uh, image, but that's fine for the moment. Um, I'm going to pick the original feature line and the island feature line and I'm just going to use the uh, displace, oh, sorry, the move and displacement command. So move command, click on displacement, zero comma, zero comma, and uh, let's raise it. Sorry, uh, too much cut, so I'm going to raise it, yes by 0.5 of a meter. Okay. This tells us that the surface has gone out of date, or calculation has gone out of date. So we can hit the refresh button up here. And now I've got a little bit too much fill, so I'm just going to do the move command again, obviously, and just iteratively we can get a level that's going to be pretty close to right. So move command. Displacement zero comma zero comma minus point two five. Refresh the figures. Got way too much cut again. Did I put point two five that time? I think I did. Uh, but you can see that that's oh, of course it's going to be way too much but too far out. Uh, so got too much. So it wants to be about. Up about 0.1 from there, we'll try. So again, move. So the two, two feature lines are still running off. Move, displacement, 0, comma, 0, comma, 0.1 upwards. Let's try that. So we're getting a lot closer there now. Possibly come up another 0.1 or 0 0.05. But as you can see, it is taking account of cut and fill factors now. So um, that's quite nice to have uh, the ability to be able to do that in this new table. Uh, we've also, of course, as I said, made a um, made a uh, volume surface out of this directly straight away as soon as you use that table. Um, so I'm going to pick my uh, my image there, send it to the back, mm 
There we go. So I can see my um, volume surface again. And let's have a look at that bandings because we haven't really done anything with that yet. So click on the surface there and go into the surface properties for our volume surface. Oops. Okay. So, and there's just interesting things going on there with my with the go to meeting uh, toolbar running at the same time. Okay, um here is our surface, go into the analysis tab, elephant elevations type analysis is what that is. I want four ranges, down arrow to fill out the table. So we've got roughly 12 metres of fill at the maximum, which will be under the island, and um, about in some places there'll be eight metres, eight metres of cut going on. So let's actually do it, I'd like to see colour banding so it shows us uh, where there's more or less than five metres of cut or fill. So I'm going to set that to zero and that to zero, this to minus five. So that's the interface between the bands what I'm sitting here. Minus five, that to plus five, and that to plus five. I'll change the colour scheme so I can see all my uh, Cuts are, cuts are going to be red, fills, I'm going to make dark green for that, and a lighter green for less than 5 metres. Be okay, and go okay. That's us. <coughs> so now we've got uh, the dark red areas where there's more than 5 metres of cut and the dark green areas where it's more than five metres of fill. And you can do any banding you like on that to, to see that, that information. So that's all looking good. Um, pretty happy with that. So I'm going to just simply select my uh, volume surface now, go into the surface properties, and in the information tab I'm going to turn the um, that surface onto no display because I've finished with that. Okay, um, let's go and um, oh, there's a just a question here at the moment. I can see where it says oh, there's a point. Okay, another tool we could, could have used. I'm just used to using the displacement feature on the move command, but with these feature lines, feature line, um, there is a command up here for raise lower feature lines. So we could use that if it'll allow us to do both at the same time. It'd be nice. I'm not sure that well, I'll try a right click, see if we get it. I've got raised lower feature lines on a right click menu, so we can do that. And let's put it up by point zero 0.01, sorry, point zero 0.05. Okay, it's not looking bad. Um, and again, if I pick the surface, actually, I may not have done something a little bit strange there. Let's have a look in the object viewer. Yeah, it has. I'm not sure why it did that. Let's just undo. Undo will save your bacon in these circumstances. Our feature lines. In theory that should work. I'm not sure quite why it's decided to change the surface when I did that, but that's another way of doing it if you don't like using the move command. Uh, good point. Okay, um, 
to continue on. So that's some of the new tools in 2012. So you can do all sorts of things in here now, um, which uh, includes pasting these together carefully. Uh, what you might want to do is a surface level. Um, so let's do a surface level in here, water surface, and then you can do volumes on your dam using your volume surfaces, etc. But just to construct that, uh, a surface water level, um, the easiest way to do that is pick your uh, surface. My pick selection is doing awful things here. We'll see how we go. I think it's just the go-to meeting thing running in the background. Um, pick a surface and uh, in the surface properties, the analysis tab here, there's another type of analysis which is used to find contours. I'm going to make just one of them. And then the drop down hit the button to fill in the uh, table down the bottom here. The elevation I want on that will be, I think, actually let's go and find out. Let's just go OK on that for the moment. I want to be some way up this little beach here. Size that thing there. That's a little 3D. That's better. It's a bit more stable now. I'm not sure why that was. Okay. Um, let's go and continue. Um, I wanted to get the levels somewhere up this little beach, so let's do a pond base there. 30.18. Of course, it's raised it up, hasn't it? 30.1 will be my water level. Um, so going back into my surface, back into the surface properties, analysis tab is our use to find contours. I want the elevation of that use to find contour to be 30.1. Now let's change the colour to cyan colour so I can see it. And we'll need to also go back into the style for that surface and just turn on the display of user contours. And go OK. And that's our little contour running around there. Selection is still doing weird things. Okay, so that's what we want to use to find water surface, and we've got one on the island as well. So let's go and pick that. Uh, actually, in fact, we're going to extract that as a polyline. So pick my uh, surface, going to extract objects. We only want the user contours and go OK. And what that's done is extracted that as a polyline I can use as a boundary for a surface. Selection's gone completely haywire. I've never had this before with uh, the go to meeting. Just give me one second here. Come back to Civil 3D. Uh, we've extracted those, we can make a new surface. So I'm going to make a new surface called water. And I'm going to put on a style of triangulation science. It kind of looks like water. Go OK. And in my surfaces collection, I'm just going to simply add the outside of that pond as a uh, break line. We could add it as a boundary as well if we had triangles in the wrong place, but these are all going to be interior triangles, so they should be fine. So I'll just 
standard, you get middle and a distance of uh, 0.1, so the curves get um, triangulated up fairly finely. Go OK, and pick that line. That's pretty good. As I say, if you had uh, a more uh, irregular shape of that pond, you could uh, also apply that particular polyline as a boundary, it, it, it can be applied as both. But what I actually want is another um, interior boundary. So I'm going to add a hide boundary for the island. It's going to be a hide type boundary, it's non destructive, middle order distance again, 0.1 should be OK. And pick the extracted polyline for that contour again. So we've now got a surface that looks like that. In association with a ground, uh, a dam surface. It's really struggling today for some reason. I don't think it's the draw. No, oh, there she goes. Stop playing around now. So hit that one and that one. Go into the object viewer. So now I've got a pond level in there. Um, water level. And you can see it's intersecting right on the border of that um, surface. Oh, that fat, fairly flat graded surface. So that's why it looks. Uh, the edge looks a little uh, rough in places. It's because it, it's just a, a graphical um, representation of the two being in almost the same plane. So it's uh, deciding which one of those it wants to show us. Uh, if we right lowered the water level a bit onto a more uh, hard edge, if you like, it's not, not such a flat edge, that, that one and two grading, we'd actually see that a lot more uh, smoothly. And in fact, that's what I've done in another drawing here, so let me just open that up just to finish. Uh, I've combined them all together, I've cut a hole, I've made a copy of the ground surface, and I've cut a hole in that ground surface so that if I select all of those, have a look in the object viewer, we've now got, I've changed the colour in the model display of the surface, that looks a bit like a sandy bank. Uh, so we can see, put into perspective view will be more realistic. Here's our little uh, pond and uh, reservoir, Mount Eden in the background and the houses surrounding it. So you can give it a bit of a visualisation um, just by, uh, by pasting the surfaces together carefully. In this case, um, they're not actually pasted, to be honest. Uh, we've just cut a hole to make them fit together. So if they were pasted together, they'll be the same colour. So if you uh, just cut holes and, and uh, are careful about the extents of each surface, you can uh, produce something that shows a bit of colour. OK. Um, Somebody just asked me, we're just uh, at the point of uh, finishing off here, I'm just going through the, uh, the little questions that uh, a few, and there's a couple of others been asked. Um, is it possible to get a copy of the webinar? Yes, we will be posting that on the, um, the new A2K uh, website. Um, I will show you where that is uh, in a moment. So but first of all, I'm going to uh, just finish off this little uh, recording uh, for you. So thank you for tuning in for the um, webinar. And uh, that's the end of the demo. And thank you and have a great afternoon. Now,